Hey guys, it's Lisa with Lisa's Crafty Creations and I am doing a flip through video for Elsa Bell's bookshelf design team. Um, I want her to see what I've done. It's kind of dragged out unfortunately because my camera mounting arm that I film with somehow either got packed or lost. I don't know, I can't find it. I ordered a new one. I thought it would be here today and of course it's not. So I wanted to go ahead and do this so she can see it. I will do another video when I post it to Facebook. That looks way better, more professional, because of course being on a design team, you want the digital kit to look its best. But here is mine. This is Painted Colors Native American Digital digital Journal Kit from Elsa Bell's Bookshelf. Um, it's a great kit. Oh my gosh, the colors the life, the majesty, the, I don't know, you look into the uh, eyes of the wolves that are included in the kit of the P Native Americans. You look into their eyes, you can feel maybe their struggle, maybe their happiness, you know, of where they were at the time. It's a pretty amazing kit and it, it really inspires a lot. In fact, it inspired me to make the biggest journal I've ever made. This one is eight and a half inches long, six and a half inches wide. There are two signatures. The first signature is 68 pages. The second signature is 60 pages for a total of 128 pages. I, the journal, the uh, journal kit inspired a story. So this journal is actually, I'm gonna tell it as a story and you can tell me what you think because I'm kind of having difficulty anyway. So this is kind of good practice before I put it up on YouTube because, you know, more people that aren't in groups see it there. So, let me start. The journal is entitled A Spy in the Reservation. The story is entitled A Spy in the Reservation. The journal is from our spy. His name is Joshua. And he made this journal after he got to the uh, reservation. Now, the Native Americans in this kit are just Native Americans. There's not a tribe associated with the kit. However, when I first saw the kit, the first tribe that popped to mind was Cherokee. So my story evolves around the Cherokee tribe, the Cherokee Nation. So Joshua was sent by President Andrew Jackson to the reservation. The Cherokee have only been there a short time. But President Jackson got wind that they have a chief and a council set up and that they're building a community. And of course, he was worried. He wanted to know what was going on. So he sent Joshua. Well, this is Joshua's journal. And what Joshua did was he made this journal and this is the cover and it shows a young, and Joshua, back up a little bit. Joshua was posing, his, pose, his identity was as a photographer. So President Jackson sent a letter to the chief and said, hey, I want to send this photographer to take yours and the council's pictures so we know you and can show you respect when you come to Washington. Well, the chief knew that was baloney, but he said, okay. So anyway, this is a picture that Joshua took and it's a young Native American girl on a ledge rock outcropping. And in the picture, you have a feather, which is very symbolic in the Native American cultures the wolf and a dream catcher. Now, this is also a page in the journal kit. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, it's gorgeous. The spine, I did a three, two, three hole punch pamphlet stitch, sewing it in, but the brown paper represents deer skin. So I have a deer skin cover. And then the back page is again, is a page of the journal itself. I covered just plain cardboard. With these pages, I thought the pages speak to what this journal is about. It's about a tribe, about a community struggling to survive in the world they live in. And this is like, this really spoke to me like this was an elder overwatching this tribe as it set out on this new journey. So anyway, this is Joshua's uh, journal. So we open it up to the first page. Inside the cover, I also used pages from the kit and I collaged them together. So you have three different um, journal pages collaged together to make, oops, to make, come on, the inside of this kit. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is a dream catcher. Dream catchers in the Native American culture were to ward off bad spirits, mostly for children 
but they were hung in homes as well, just depending on the Native American family. Now here's the first page, and this is the first thing that Joshua saw when he got to the uh, community, the reservation, was the art, the art on the buildings, the art on the um, deer skin, on the buffalo skin hanging. This one depicts a great hunter. It has the arrow at the bottom, it has the headdress, then it has the deer. So it depicts somebody who is a really good hunter and this hangs in their house. The feathers, the feathers can represent many things. Good luck, um, ceremonial, love, protection, all sorts of things. So this could have been he was a good hunter and the feathers were there for good luck or to show uh, his success. So when he got there, whoops, this is a little belly band and of course I'm not gonna be able to get it out. Sorry, I'm having problems with my right hand lately. Doesn't want to work. This is the chief of the Cherokee tribe. It's also a journaling card in the kit. Isn't it great? Look at the detail. And this was a little map I found in um, some my ephemera. And I just wanted to show that the Cherokee and most Indian nations moved from the east or the west. And they were moved to a central location in Oklahoma. And this is our spy photographer, Joshua. So this is his journal that we're looking at and he's telling us the story through his journal, through his pictures. So when he got there, he noticed all the beautiful dream catchers hanging around everywhere. And I mean, Ellie did such an amazing job with this kid. These dream catchers speak, they're all different. They all have character. So when Joshua got there, the chief told him, hey, you can't live with me. You can't live with any of the other members of the tribe. You have to make your own house. Well, the thing is the Cherokee don't live in teepees. They live in mud and grass homes with uh, tree branches bent over. So it took him a while, but he made his own home. And that's a picture of it. And then this is a picture of his first of many dream catchers that he made for his home because he saw them in all the other homes in the village. Then he saw around all this beautiful artwork, so he included it in his journal. And it's just, the pages are just gorgeous. He also wrote to his wife and sons, he had three sons at home, and he wrote to them regularly, and this is a picture he took, and he was gonna send it on the next stagecoach. Included in the journal are plenty of lined writing pages if you like that. It makes it so easy. You can tell your story. In the background is a chief with a major headdress or a great hunter. It shows the landscape. Again, beautiful paper. And here we have all different kinds of feathers. Again, they can symbolize good luck, maybe uh, courage, you know, toward off evil spirits, and then they flip. They all flip up, and you can write something underneath them secret, or you can leave them as a waterfall. Here is a picture on a journaling page of a great hunter coming back. Joshua took this picture. He loved it. It showed the majesty of this tribe. Now here are some tickets that were in the journal. I turned them into basically samples of pottery. They're hard, they are on cardboard, and they could be like hard pottery samples that Joshua picked up around the uh, reservation. Again, the beauty of this uh, journal, the journaling pages just strikes you. Here's a tag with a um, dream catcher on it. And this is a money coin thing that I've cut in half. I've added some washi tape and I thought it looked like buffalo skin, and I made a pocket. And Joshua collected the feathers. He liked the symbolism of the feathers. He wasn't sure what they all meant because again, still nobody was communicating with him very much. But as he stayed and he built his house, he took his pictures, the medicine man came up to him and started talking to him and started explaining to him how they used the buffalo hide, what the feathers meant, what you know, all the symbolism was. Again, the same page with paper, the great warrior, the chief, the landscape, just beautiful. 
So when the uh, messy man started talking to Joshua, he told him about the wolf. The wolf are the ancestors. They're the protectors. They're the warriors that have gone. And they watch out for the tribe. They show the tribe strength and give them hope and courage. And the journaling cards are beautiful. There is one, again, a different one, Dreamcatcher. And then look at the eyes of that journaling card, that wolf. It is amazing. So the journaling cards and the tags in this kit are wonderful. They have feeling. Again, the wolf, the messenger told the wolf, symbolizes courage, majesty, compassion, strength to carry on, even in the toughest of times. And that's what I think this whole kit is about. The Painted Colors Native American Digital Journal Kit. It's about carrying on. It's about facing the hard times and looking in them in the eye and knowing that those that have gone before us are there to help and keep us going. Even though they may not really be here, they're here. So as Joshua stayed in the community, they started sharing more with him. And one of the things the ladies shared, some of their fabric and some of the uh, silver that they made into decorations. He also started doing his own painting using the techniques of the um, Native Americans, using the plants and the uh, spices. They would paint these great pictures and the colors are so vibrant, it's amazing. Again, he loved the feathers. All of these um, shoot dream catchers again are different. In the, they're different. And then this is this paper is really super soft, dark brown. I thought it represented buffalo skin perfectly. Then this is a little tuck spot on this side. But if you flip over, this is an awesome envelope it has a wolf howling at the moon you flip it up and you can put a goodie in there and then and this journaling page i just love this is like to me would be the chief's wife or daughter she's very majestic she's very strong she's you know handles adversity and she's saying i can do it you know bring it on here i am so Joshua took this picture, he made the frame, he colored it with the, the Native American techniques. It also has the feather representing beauty and good luck. Now this is a, a ephemera photo of a lake I've added, and it could be a lake where the uh, Cherokee would camp by. They were uh, hunter-gatherers, and the women were the farmers in the group. They'd go out and tend the fields and farm. So she was a farmer, she would go out and get the crops in and prepare the meals, take care of the clothes, do the painting, do the pottery. I mean, the women were really, you know, a big backbone of this tribe. The men would go out and hunt, which was very important because it provided the pelts to make the clothes, the blankets and whatnot. They would fish as well. So being near a lake, a water source was very important. Joshua, while he was at the reservation, outside of the reservation, another tribe was going by on their way to their reservation. And the uh, Cherokees could not leave the reservation, but Joshua could. He went out and met the tribe. They were at the water source getting water and they'd set up teepees um, for a temporary stay for a few days. And as he was walking back to the reservation, Joshua met a wolf. And the wolf just laid down and looked at him and was totally at peace with Joshua being there. And Joshua thought that was very interesting because before he felt like if he had seen a wolf, he would have run screaming. And this time there was just calmness. He wasn't afraid. He had remembered what the medicine man's words. Here's another beautiful journal page showing the beautiful colors. You've got the dream catcher feathers. Here's a bag. Again, Joshua was immersing himself in the artwork. He had forgot totally about why he was there. He was now welcomed into other homes. Um, he was just becoming a part of the tribe. Here again, we have another tuck spot and another beautiful envelope where you can tuck stuff. I tried to um, leave the pages as is so you blank, so you can have plenty of writing room. 
and they're gorgeous. Again, the wolf symbolizing the strength and the majesty. And it would also be good luck going out on a hunt. You would often see the wolf symbolized with the uh, tomahawk. If you look it up, there's our feather underneath. Here's. So Joshua put this together and he recorded his thoughts. He kept his artwork that he did while he was here. This page is a beautiful page, part of the gorgeous kit, has the eagle spread wings, but also looks like an angel. Here's the Indian's headdress, the chief's headdress. Here's another um, different, beautiful um, dream catcher. And then, that's the end, wait. Almost to the end, okay. Another page for writing, lots of lined paper, just some decoration. Here I've made a pocket out of the feathers and inside I've included a lot of journaling cards and tags. I have the feather and all the feathers are different. You can cut them out. Another dream catcher and then our, our, our wolf. The eyes that say, I'm here, I am protection, courage, wisdom. Joshua's respect for the wolf just went up tenfold after he spent a lot of time with the tribe and learning about it. There's more feathers, the gorgeous colors. The, the reservation was full of all of this beautiful artwork. It was just, Joshua was blown away. He never imagined he would see this kind of artwork in the tribe. So here's our second signature, and then it starts out with our ancestor watching over the reservation, same as on the back. You open it up, and here Joshua's presented with an arrow. He went out on a hunt, he didn't do very good, but it was a good hunt. So they presented him with the arrow that killed the biggest um, buffalo. In here, he saved a feather that he wore during the hunt. He saved the, um, a painting of eagle, eagle wings that look like angel wings. And then here, this was gifted to him by the medicine man. And it's just to wish his home and his family many good luck. You know, much good luck. Whoops. Put a feather in there. We go. There we go. And then here Joshua put, he loved the wolves. He symbolized them. He took a lot of pictures of them. And he always liked to pair them with a dream catcher or a um, feather or both. So he's been taking pictures for a while. He's actually been on the reservation three months. And he's starting to wonder if he really wants to take the photographs of the chief and the council for the president. One night while he's contemplating this, he's out doing some painting outside. It's a beautiful summer night and he's doing some painting and a wolf comes up and stares at him. And Joshua finds himself starting to talk to the wolf. And the wolf just lays down but continues the stare, will not break the girl, like, get the, the, the gaze. Afterwards, Joshua feels like he knows what he needs to do, but he's still not 100% sure. Beautiful page. Another different type of um, dream catcher. And this is the file folder where all the photos are supposed to go of the chief and the council, but as you know, it's empty. He still hasn't done it. Oops. So, it's like the fourth month starting. The fourth month is starting, and... The chief gets another letter from President Jackson and it says, hey, it's come to our attention. Sorry guys, I'll quit fiddling with this. It's come to our attention that you are teaching the Cherokee alphabet. I gotta fix that, I'll tighten that up. Anyway, it says, 
comes to our attention, you're teaching the Cherokee alphabet to your tribe members, your children, and your adults. And this is not acceptable. We want you to teach the English alphabet and language. So the chief is angry by this, but he knows there's nothing he can do. So after hearing this, Joshua approaches the chief and says, Chief, I would like to bring my wife, Annabelle, and my sons to the reservation with your permission, and my wife, Annabelle, can teach the English language. And so the chief ponders for a while, and then he sends this feather to Joshua, which means your family is welcome to come to the reservation and stay. That night, when on his way to meet his family, again, Joshua sees the wolf. The wolf is laying down, being quite calm, as if this is the right move for both the tribe and for Joshua. So Joshua goes to the Wells Fargo station and meets his wife, oops, meets his wife and his three sons, and they join him to live on the reservation. And his wife brings items to help teach. She brought this piece of paper. If you unfold it, it is a writing. But it's also letters and stuff to help teach the Native American children and adults how to read and write English. She also brought a language lessons, introductory grammar comprehension book, and again, more letters, alphabets. But what's going on that the president doesn't know is that at the same time that Annabelle is teaching the English, the Cherokee teacher is teaching beside her, teaching the Cherokee alphabet and the Cherokee language. So they're dual teaching and uh, Joshua and Annabelle's kids are learning and they're loving this. And um, Annabelle's loving it. She's trading recipes with the uh, Native American ladies. Here's a couple of recipes she traded. She gave them mouth-watering fried catfish and possum stew. And they gave her um, how to make wheat, how to make corn. They gave her great recipes on using the corn. They gave her some of their lace and metal. And she gave them some uh, hand-done crochet. So they were loving it. The kids were loving it. The kids were learning art. They were teaching the Native American children their games of stickball and tag and hide and seek. And the Native American children were playing basically the same games, just with different names. And were teaching Annabelle and Joshua's kids. And the kids were making their own art. And they were making their own dream catchers. So Joshua's family was loving their time on the reservation. And after a while, Joshua went to the chief and said, I am now ready to do the portraits of you and the council, but they are not for the president. I have resigned as a spy and my family and I would like to live on the reservation with your tribe. The chief, of course, was very pleased and welcomed the family with open arms. And these are the last pictures that are in Joshua's notebook. Joshua's journal, and they are of the chief, his daughter, a great warrior in the tribe, and then back, we have several more, another dream catcher, and headdress, because the artwork was telling the story the whole time. The pages of the journal were telling the story of this tribe. Here's more council members. They were great hunters and fishermen. And there is our front cover, our small Native American girl, contemplating life. Another great Indian council member. There's our, one of our great hunters. And inside of um, just added the citation information for my story where I got some of the information that I, you know, kind of bent into my historical fiction short story. The last is our chief as he was older. And then at the end, right after Joshua took all the council pictures and hung them in a great meeting hall on the reservation, a white wolf appeared. And the white wolf is rare, but it symbolizes peace and harmony and love. And 
Joshua had finally found peace and feeling like he belonged, and him and his family were very happy on the reservation. Now, this is his journal. It was told using painted colors, Native American digital journal kit by Elsa Bell's bookshelf. It's available. If you don't have a printer to print it, she does offer that uh, option as well. But I hope you liked it. Let me know if the story's too confusing when I do the flip through on you. Uh, YouTube, I can just do a straight flip through without the story. Anyway, I hope you like it. I hope it's not too long. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Ellie, I hope you liked it. Bye.